Hey folks, Masako X here. Now, this idea came about when all the other what ifers out there, like Carthu and Smugstick, were discussing this possibility. What could happen should Beerus decide that he no longer wanted to be friends with the strongest members of Universe 7 and his most convenient tool, and instead take away the strongest member and the person that basically had given him so much relief, intrigue, as well as admittedly plenty of headaches along the way. This is the story of what could have happened had Goku been tricked by Beerus. If you're wondering what Whis has to say about this, then you shall find out, as this will be a one and done. No backseas, like with the whole story of Hima raising Goku over here. And in my mind it's Hima, not Vomi. Never Vomi. So am I going to take elements from Superhero? Yes, I will. So if you are waiting for the likes of Superhero and not wish to be spoiled, then there are going to be some minor spoilers here, and I would suggest you place this video in your watch later list and come back later to it when you're ready. But to those of you who have been spoiled, or you're not really fussed about it, you shall find out what I could use in the fullness of this video. And I will remind you all that this is going to be a very different take on it, and it's going to be uh, very Dragon Ball. What does that even mean, Masako? Well, it's not going to be your typical dark, edgy story. It'll feel a bit more authentic. But with that, let's set the scene. The story begins during that sequence on Beerus's planet during Superhero, where Goku and Vegeta have been training for hours without transforming into their Super Saiyan states, as per their rules. Beerus is watching this casually go down, and throughout all of this, he keeps looking at chi -Lai. After he had made that comment earlier about her being cute, and saying that, oh, she and Lemo could stay on his planet for as long as they want. Effectively granting the trio permanent residence on his world, that including Broly. But then it dawns on him, as Vegeta, off in the distance, gets the last hit on Goku, claiming victory over his greatest rival, albeit in a sparring match. With a thud akin to the prince falling backward on the ground, something came over Beerus. He had changed. What was he doing? He wasn't acting in a manner fit for a destroyer in the tradition of old. He was accruing live-in chums, mortal chums, being swayed by cooking abilities and cuteness? How had he become so much like a mortal without realising it? Like he used to be before he became a G.O.D. He was more than that. He was supposed to be more than that. He had been trying to assuage these feelings for ages that he had become soft, but he kept putting it away, kicking the can. Ever since the Tournament of Power, he had been feeling weird about this whole arrangement, fraternising with mortals on the regular. The sheer relief, though, from the victory in that tournament and Universe 7's continued existence had pushed those sentiments aside, but now, with Chi Lai being there and him getting the hots for her, that was when it was time to draw the line. For now, though, what was he going to do? Suddenly, a twinge of energy from very far away, three giant powers, probably from Earth, twigged his conscious thought. That was weird. The three strongest people that he knew of were right here. That was a welcome distraction, though. He got up and asked Whis if he had felt it. Yes, indeed I did, Lord Beerus. Shall I inform the Saiyans about it? They do like a little bit of argy-bargy. Uh, uh, yes, do. I, uh, I'm getting a headache. I'm going to have a nap and uh, think things over. Bye, Whis. He walked off without another word, and that made Whis feel a little strange. Funny. He doesn't often think. Oh, well. He then told Goku and Vegeta, who were barely conscious, about this sudden energy fluctuation that had come from Earth. He offered to take them home to investigate. They did so, with Goku barely able to hold on to Whis's back as he was that tired, leaving Lemo, Chila, and Broly all alone on Beerus's world. Beerus is gone, Whis is acting like a taxi, no idea what to do other than to, um, check out the kitchen? since that's where Beerus had implied they'd be working from now on? They shrugged and headed there. With Whis gone for about an hour or so, Beerus did not go for a nap. He was thinking some more, and what he was thinking was some rather dark thoughts. He was trying to figure out why he had become so cushy, so dependent on mortals and their stupidly good cooking. He had become too reliant on food. 
It was making him think improperly, clouding his judgement. Yeah, perhaps the overindulgence over the years had tainted his performance to act like a proper god of destruction. Why he napped so often? He was going into food comas. It was a possibility. But the real cause of this change in behaviour all had to come from somewhere. It became clear though where it was coming from. Goku. That one Super Saiyan God that had come into his life in a prophecy, turning his life completely upside down. He had had it good before meeting him. No mortals getting in the way, the food was decent enough, and he could nap whenever he wanted. He didn't have to stay up for anyone. With Goku and that blasted prophecy, he had to do stuff. Make an effort, always be on his toes in case those wretched Saiyans and his friends gave him a surprise in the power department, you never know. No matter what he thought, it all came back to Goku. He was the root of all of this upheaval, and he had to be stopped. We then returned and went to check on Beerus, expecting him to be asleep, but instead, the cat was in deep thought. Lord Beerus, you're awake. That's very unusual. Can it, Whis? I've been thinking. Have we been a little too accommodating with these mortal fools? Accommodating? Well, I will admit that our involvement with them has been rather on the uh, substantial side, but the food is just so delightful that it's hard to say no. It's easy to look the other way, Lord Beerus. Exactly! You've proven my point! We have been tempted, you see, by such base desires. It's very unlike us. We splint. Since when did that stop you before? Well, it's stopping me now, Whis. It's time for me to act more like how a destroyer is supposed to act. Do either Goku or Vegeta show any indication of wanting to become my successor? Alas, no. They've shown no interest. By the way, did you wish to find out what that power surge was about Lord Beerus? It was quite fascinating. The cat waved his hand as if to say no. Well, that settles it. If they do not wish to be candidates, then they're wastes of space in my book. We should be placing our time and efforts into more suitable mortals. And then again, why even bother? I'm still in my prime. I can go for another few million years. <laughs> What's the rush? He smirked, a troubling smirk. Weiss wasn't sure whether he liked Beerus with get up and go. Weiss excused himself and went to check on Broly, Chila and Lemo. Weeks passed and Beerus had become more and more insular. He had been spending more and more time thinking, and as he mused to himself, it was becoming increasingly obvious that mortals were giving him all the more migraines. It would be better to just get rid of all of them. Okay, maybe not all of them, but he had to be sure whether he was right. He then went to go and check the room where scared and cowardly races had festooned him with gifts over the eons as tribute. They usually just ended up in a dark room to save their sorry hides, these trinkets, wondering if that maybe one token that he thought and he got was still knocking around. That could come in handy. Yes, this could seal the deal, he said to himself when he found it. If things didn't work out, he could use it. He approached Broly one day, the pair of them alone, with Beerus wanting to test Broly's power out one on one. Broly had been progressing fairly well, the cat asking him a question in the middle of their sparring session. Say, my boy, are you interested in becoming the next god of destruction? After me, he said casually. Broly was confused. Me? But aren't Goku and Vegeta? Beerus interrupted. They apparently have better things to attend to. You, though, seem to be much more suited to the role. No obligations, limitless potential, no one to worry about you. The perfect candidate. He was looking very smug, and that was making Broly nervous. I'm I'm not sure whether I want to. Beerus then backed off quite suddenly before giving Broly a gift. I wanted you to have this by the way. He presented Broly a belt made for some very exotic looking metal. It's a token of the gods to commemorate your time with me. You can wear it over that rag of yours. I meant to give it to you earlier. Broly put it on without question as it was a gift and it was nice. It looked nice. But not long after he put it on, his mind clouded over and he bowed to Beerus and flatly said, Lord Beerus, I am yours to command. Beerus's eyes widened with mirth. At a boy, my student. He patted Broly on the shoulder. There's a 
Darth Sidious vibes here. The next couple of days were interesting. Broly had become less frenetic and bubbly, and instead he'd become quite straight laced and flat, like he'd had some kind of personality bypass. Chi like kept asking what was going on, why was Broly acting like this, but Beerus, not wanting to look her in the eye, stated that he was fine and that it was none of her concern, it was just godly stuff. Dilemma write down all the recipes of his, by the way. Chi Lai nodded and Beerus acknowledged her. Even Whis was getting suspicious. And it got even weirder when Beerus told him to take Chi Lai and Lemo and not bring them back. Apparently, he told them, Broly didn't want to be near them anymore and found them to be distractions from his godly duties. Whis was perplexed by this, this being very much out of character. But he did what he was told. Hating the thought of them, though, being left to fend for themselves again back on Vampa very undeserved. Why couldn't it have been a nicer planet? But when Whis got back, he went to talk with Broly. But before he even said anything, Whis clocked the belt. I see. And walked away, leaving Broly puzzled at the very short talk. Meanwhile though, Chi Lai contacted Bulma via the supplies she had been given from Bulma during the Broly movie, and alerted her that Broly had cast them out for some reason, and they weren't getting a response back. That was funny, Bulma thought. She had been trying to get in touch with Whis as well to showcase Gohan and Piccolo's new powers, but she'd heard nothing. She got zero response, like Whis was intentionally blocking her. She then messaged Goku and Vegeta to go and pick up chi -Lai and Lemo to bring them to Earth for the moment whilst they could figure out the problem. Back on Beerus' planet, Whis confronted Beerus and demanded to know what the idea was by giving that mind control belt to Broly. Natural Whis is to temper his muddled brain. It came from love, you see. You understand firsthand how he is afflicted with that angry mind, and so I thought it fit to quell his troubled thoughts. I was just looking out for the boy. By doing what his father did to him, taking away his freedom for another's convenience? Don't you lumber me with that mortal logic, Whis. I am a god. I am your ruler. I can do what I want. And if it ensures a worthy candidate in my stead, then so be it. I am done with the others. If Goku or Vegeta didn't want the job, then to hell with them. Do not accept any transmissions from that wench Bulmer either, or I will report you to your father. Do you understand? Beerus clearly had had enough of this conversation, and Whis, as his attendant, had no choice but to comply. Granted, he was glad that Beerus wanted to focus and do his job, but the way he was going about it, through having to use trinkets, manipulation, and isolation, it was just not cricket. What Goku and friends had taught them was that mortals were useful. They were catching up. They could easily cause problems should they be ignored, or worse. But Beerus was the boss. Oh well. Things had gotten cold, and Goku and Vegeta didn't like this. The idea of Beerus suddenly going dark and not even Whis contacting them for his occasional food runs was rather alarming. Goku had asked King Kai to keep an antenna out for any planets that were on Beerus' chopping block. The best logic being was that if he were ignoring them and going back to his daily duties, he'd be going off to do what he usually did best and blow up planets. They might be able to get back to Broly too. Sure enough, after much whining and searching from King Kai, they had found Beerus doing his work. Despite him not being able to be sensed because of God Key, Broly was detectable when he was with the cat. Go get him, Goku, but um, <laughs> don't, 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 don't tell Beerus I sent you. Goku and Vegeta transmitted to the planet where Beerus was appraising said world to see if it was worthy of his time. They arrived and caught Beerus off guard, but as for Whis, he wasn't surprised at all. He knew where they would find them eventually, since he was very familiar with Goku's style. Beerus, what's going on? said Goku in a rather patronizing manner not assuming anything malicious was going on, even though Vegeta was thinking it was totally the case. You got us all worried sick. And why are you ignoring our calls? And why is Broly acting weird? Beerus turned to Goku and looked daggers at him. You should have left well enough alone. I made myself specifically clear with my silence. Now it's time to silence you. Beerus, with one flick of the hand, caught both Goku and Vegeta off guard, and they were sent flying for miles into several mountain formations. Broly and Whis watched on, as Beerus fought the pair of them at once. Broly asked Whis if he should assist his master, but Whis, looking extremely dejected, shook his head. 
This is not going to end well. It's best that you stay out of it. For who? said Broly, but Wasted an answer. Beerus had been training with Broly, being a much more active participant in his training than he had been with the Saiyans. Goku and Vegeta were left helpless. Despite their training with Gohan and Piccolo's new transformations, it was clear that Beerus was now, for the first time, using 100% of his power, and that power was greater than ever. By the way, I must point out here, there is no mastered Ultra Instinct here in the traditional sense of the manga or Ultra Ego, since we're going off of the anime timeline and not the manga. That could change in time, but for now, it's not stated in the animated continuity that they know both of those techniques, so we're not going to run with them. Goku and Vegeta were being trounced. They had no sensu beans to hand because they didn't assume they would need any, and their friends were too far away to help them quickly. They had been tricked by Beerus, and neither Broly or Whis were doing anything to stop it. Whis was looking at Goku with intent. Come on, Goku, don't forget your ace in the hole, he was thinking but all seemed lost. Goku and Vegeta were left battered and bruised on the ground, dying, with no more power to call upon. Beerus looked at them with cold eyes. I gave you plenty of chances to make the right choice and buzz off, but all you did was give me another headache, after countless headaches before that. My life was fine without you, but I will give you one last gift, a normal death. The other world will treat you well. Goku turned his head to Whis, as if to say, Why? But Whis just tapped his fingers together. It clicked, or more accurately, it pressed. Goku used the last of his strength and pressed something that was in his pocket before expiring. Seconds later, the two Zenos were on the scene and were eager to play with Goku, since he had pressed the button to summon them. But instead of play, they met his body. He was dead. The Zenos were understandably upset at not only Goku dying on them, but also for the fact that they'd been summoned all this way for nothing. Who did this? said the present Zeno, who had the most attachment to Goku. Whis pointed to Beerus, who suddenly lost all of his bravado at the sight of Zeno. He had completely forgotten that Goku had that blasted thing, because he then realised what Goku had done. He had pressed the Zeno button. He shouldn't have did that. Explain, said the pair of them flatly, with Beerus now having to explain his actions and why he had killed them. That he had given them plenty of chances to live and, well, it didn't really matter anyway because none of those reasons sat well with the Zenos because remember, they're basically children. We wanted to play with Goku and you stopped us from playing. Whis was quite calm. It's true, you did, Lord Beerus. Beerus was terrified and was frantically trying to make it up to Zeno saying he would use the Super Dragon Balls to wish them back, but too late. The Zenos just straight up erased Beerus without so much as another word. But wait, Masako, why would they do this? Why would they act so irrationally? Think. They're the Zenos. They don't think rationally. Wait, Masako, doesn't Whis become dormant because there's no G.O.D.? Well, technically no. Since Broly had been primed to become the next Destroyer God, there was a clear and obvious line of succession. And so Whis gets to remain conscious, or at least for now. Future Zeno then demands Whis to find a way to bring Goku and Vegeta back to life, since they wanted to see Vegeta play too, since according to Goku, he was his best friend. Whis vowed to do what he could and would bring both of them to their palace as soon as possible for a play session. Good, they said and disappeared. Whis was in a tight spot here. Sure, he himself had betrayed Beerus by giving Goku the prompt to summon Zeno, but he had warned Beerus countless times about looking a gift horse in the mouth instead of eating said horse, but now he had Broly in figurative chains in charge of his waking moments. What was he going to do? But for now, the first thing to do was to get Goku and Vegeta revived, and that was done thanks to the Namekian Dragon Balls. Whis apologising for the incident to Goku and Vegeta, explaining that Broly's die had been cast thanks to Beerus' impulses, that he could no longer be a regular Saiyan. Even Wiz's faculties in place. He has been chosen, and there is nothing I can do. I have given him his mind and independence back, but he cannot quit being a god of destruction this early on, or this universe might collapse due to the imbalance that it would cause. I will make sure that his friends can resume residence by his side and outlast the clock, he winked. Does this mean we can't train with you anymore? Wiz shook his head. Oh no, you can. I would like that very much. 
This universe needs strong warriors to protect it from who knows what. Besides, Lord Broly could do with some sparring partners. Now please remember to bring some of that delicious food with you next time you come. It's been too long. But before Whis left, Vegeta demanded to know why Beerus did what he did, and why he himself had tricked him. We sighed. It was one act too far. The tournament proved to me that strong opponents would darken our doorways in the fullness of time. No matter what I said, Beerus could just not see that. He was curmudgeonly, old, backward, unable to realize that things were changing and that there were fantastic opportunities to further broaden his reach amongst others. But he just could not deal with it. And after that rather idiotic stunt he pulled, fate corrected itself. And here we are. But I feel we changed for the better now. See you soon. With that, we vanished, and order in Universe 7 was restored. What if Beerus had betrayed the Saiyans? Well, it was the last thing he ever did in this iteration of events. If you like this timeline and wanted to see more of Lord Broly, check out this one, where the cat and the angel raised Broly from the beginning. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!